Hey, it's Gabe. Uh, today I'm going to give you a tutorial on setting up the post call outcome data uh, workflow that I have for Synthflow. And it's right here. I'm going to click into it and kind of show you, walk you through this, show you how I have it set up, and then I'll show you how to link it up on your end so that you can connect the webhook and get this to work. Now, what is the call webhook? Uh, what is the post call outcome data webhook? It simply means that when we have a call answered by the AI and there's actually a conversation, then we can get information from that conversation and add that information to our contact inside of our Go High Level account. So for instance, maybe you want to know the call outcome, the transcript, a summary of the call, the call uh, duration, recording, all this type of stuff. You want to know that information about it and you want to be able to easily see that on your contact. And not to mention, you'll be able to use things like the call outcomes to trigger something else to happen and maybe do another automation inside your Go High Level account. So very, very useful. It's an advanced feature, but when you get this set up, it's absolutely amazing. So in a minute, I'll show you how to connect the inbound webhook, but here's how I have mine set up. Uh, first, I have a GPT action and I have a prompt in here that is uh, giving it instructions and then it gives it the transcript from this webhook. And what I'm telling it to do is give me a call summary. Uh, so that's the first thing that I have happen when it comes through. Uh, then I have it uh, find the contact. It's going to either create or update the contact. And this is based on the phone field. So again, it's gonna take the contact's phone number. It's gonna look at the inbound webhook phone number. If it can't find the match, it's gonna create the contact. If it can find the match, it's simply going to update the contact with the new call information. And then it's going to, these are all custom fields I have added to my contact. So we can add the call duration to the duration we get from the webhook. Date and time, this is simply not even from the webhook. This is just simply a right now date and time. We can get this by going to right now. So I just manually timestamp these calls. Um, you can get the timestamp from the call. I just don't like the format, so I do it myself so I can format it correctly. Uh, the call recording we get from the webhook. The call summary, here's where we input the response from our chat GPT so we can have a summary. That way we can quickly see what happened. We don't have to look through the entire transcript or listen to the recording if we don't want to, simply just for convenience. Then we have the call outcome. I'll show you where this comes from as well. Uh, this is not a native feature to Synthflow. We have to kind of build this out. Then we have the call status and end call reason. These are two uh, optional ones that you can add. These uh, come over from the webhook, and so it's kind of interesting to see what comes across depending on maybe it, it, hungs up, it hang up because of a, a voicemail or different things. It'll actually tell you that, which is more information uh, than I've, I've been able to get from other uh, voice AI call services. So um, that is when it creates the contact. Then uh, these, these are all... Uh, custom fields so that if we want to export that data we can we actually put the same information we make a note and we add this note to the contact with pretty much the same information again this is just for convenience so we can quickly look at our contact notes and see what happened but we also have it in the custom field so if we ever want to export that data or send it to a spreadsheet we can easily do so as well so a lot of this is just for convenience not 100 percent necessary whenever a call is answered i always add this tag for myself AI call needs verified. This just tells me a call's been answered and I need to take a look at it and see what the next actions are possibly. Um, I have a math operation here. This is an action where, where I have a custom field called call pickups. Every single time this webhook is triggered, that means a call has been answered. So I just have it add a plus one to this field using the math operation action, which is a really cool feature. And it's just a ticker so I can see how many times this client has picked up the phone. Again, just op, uh, th this is just uh, simply something that I like to see and is definitely not necessary to do. Um, I have another call operation, which I like to divide the call duration by 60 so I can get minutes. When we get the call duration from the webhook, it actually comes across as seconds. Um, I like to see it as minutes. So that's, again, for convenience for me. Um, and then I have an internal notification send out to me, and this just tells me that we have a new call. It tells me the name, the phone number, the outcome, all that stuff that we put in the notes and on the contact, I can easily quickly see. This is emailed to me immediately so that I don't miss any leads and I can check to see if that was an important call or not. Uh, I always have my email in front of me, so I'm gonna check that more regularly than I would be in 
in my system, in my CRM, where I may not see those notifications. So that's why I have that email set up. Now, lastly, the big meat and potatoes of all this that everybody likes is the call outcomes. Uh, so the call outcomes fra comes from the webhook as well, but this is the part I gotta show you how to set up. It's not native, there's some work involved here, but ultimately we're building out an if else statement that says that if it's booked appointment and uh, when it comes across from the webhook, it contains the word booked appointment or follow up or live transfer. It's going to go down these different branches where we can add tags, we can uh, add them to the correct pipeline stage. And then we, uh, down here, lastly, we remove them from the call trigger automation, uh, which this is unnecessary if you don't have multi steps in that call trigger. If it's just a one call trigger and done, then you don't really need this. If you have it for some reason set up where you're doing uh, the first call and if it's not answered, you're doing another call, then uh, if it was answered, I have it set up so it would remove them out of out of there if, if we needed to do that. So um, let me show you how to set up the inbound webhook trigger and how to get the call outcomes, which is the most important thing to come across. So we're gonna jump into my demo account here. Uh, this particular agent is just called REI Follow-Up. So I created him to follow up with uh, leads for my uh, REI business, but actually I don't even use this one. This is just a demo. So underneath deployment right here, we have a spot where we can plug in a webhook. So that is where, when we come back here to this inbound webhook trigger, we have to put in this webhook. So if we were setting this up from the beginning, let me show you how it would look. Inbound webhook trigger. Uh, well, well, let me add it, another one. But let me just show you. You're not going to see this. This is what's called a result. So whenever uh, it says check for new results, whenever you do a sample call, you get a result. Uh, you're not gonna see this when you first set this inbound webhook trigger up. I've already done this and connected it, so it, we have a result here. So just ignore the result part. Uh, all you're gonna see is this URL right here. This inbound webhook trigger is gonna give you a unique URL right here when you create it. You're gonna click this copy button on the right hand side, and then you're going to paste it right here in the webhook. And then after you paste it there, you're going to click initialize. What happens is when you click initialize, it sends over a sample request and you're going to click on it and then you're going to save. Let's see here. Yeah, it's not showing me save. Let me refresh my screen. Sometimes this gets messed up where it won't show you things on your screen. You just have to refresh it and I'll show you what I mean here in a second. There we go. It wasn't showing me this button down here. So after you get your sample request, you click Save Trigger, and you have it saved. Now, most important thing I can tell you, that sample request does not have the call outcomes or any other special things that you have set up. Special things meaning if we go to the prompt, um, these are the special things. That's not an official term, but these are the actions. And the way we set up our... our um, call outcomes is in the information extractor. Now I already have one set up here. I'm going to go ahead and remove it so that I can show you how to set it up. All right, so now we have the informa information extractor removed. To set this up, we're going to do information extractor. For some reason, I think there's a bug with the system. This first one you see pop up does not work. So always click new extractor then let's do single choice. And then after you've done single choice, you're gonna go over here to select template. And under templates, you're gonna select call outcome. Apply this template and then come back immediately to this first one and remove it because it does not work. And then uh, it closes out, just click back into here. And now you can see this template came with some call outcomes. Now you can edit these choices and make these different. You, these are basically just saying this is the call outcome and this is how you know it's the call outcome. This is the next call outcome and this is how you know it's the next call outcome. So we're giving it the outcomes, then you're doing a dash and you're giving it a prompt that tells it how it knows that's a call outcome. It's gonna use these prompts right here to analyze the call afterwards to appropriately apply one of these choices. Now you can add another one. I like to add in wrong number. I also like to add in DNC. Now it comes with, um, if you look at the select templates, it does come with a DND win, which is basically DNC. 
But uh, in my opinion, there's no reason to have that separate when you can add it right in here to the call outcomes and have it all together. So this is how I build out my call outcomes. Now, once we have these set, we now have to turn on this toggle over here on the right hand side, send webhook after test calls completed. We need to turn that on by default, it'll be off. Then we're going to do a test call by filling out this information right here, calling our agent, talking with it until we have enough information where it can utilize one of these call outcomes. So if I was gonna test it quickly, I would just simply say, uh, no, I'm not interested. So that's one of the call outcomes, then I would hang up on it. Then what you're gonna wanna do after you uh, do that test call, this is now going to send a new webhook response to Go High Level or your connected platform. So we're gonna go back over here. We're gonna click on the webhook response. You're gonna click here. You're gonna click check for new requests. You're gonna see the date right here and see what is the newest request. And then when you find it, it's gonna look something like this. You're gonna scroll down. You're gonna see that there is a, uh, we have an action type, which is the info action type. We can see that we the identifier is called call outcome. That's the name of our info extractor. We can see that it gives us the condition on when this should run. And then we can see the choices it gives us on what it's looking at to determine what this call outcome is. And then right down here, we have a return value. Return value call outcome, not interested. So now that it looked at all these choices, it's going to determine using its AI intelligence what the outcome was and it determined this was a not interested outcome. So this is the new sample. We now have call outcomes connected and can use this. So we're going to save that new response that we get. We're gonna go down here to call outcomes and then we're gonna connect it. And I'm gonna click out of this first one just to show you one time how this is done. When you click on, when you set this up like this, you uh, type in booked appointment you're gonna type the drop, click the drop down. You're gonna choose inbound webhook trigger. You're gonna go down to the executed actions. Then you're gonna click on my extract info. Scroll down till you find return value. And then scroll down till you see the call outcome. Now we have the call outcome value and we're gonna tell it if that value contains booked appointment. then it's going to go down this path and do exactly what you want it to do. Uh, you could send this to an appointment reminders. You can do everything. You know, the sky's the limit once you determine what happens on a call and you use this as a switchboard basically to direct it on where you want it to go. Man, sky's truly unlimited on what you can do with the power of using this AI calling combined with Go High Level to uh, continue doing automations and other things to these contacts. So uh, this was a bit of an advanced video. If you needed help, I can set this up for you. Uh, and if you just want to have a meeting with me or uh, you want to need a call or anything like that, I typically have my link down below. So just let me know uh, if there's anything else I can do to help you guys out. Have a great week.